this is just going to be a short one we're doing a space invaders board this is actually mine it's been broken for a couple of months i'm just doing a quick ram test on the fluke uh this one only uses a braze multi game kit and i think by accident plugging it in backwards uh i blew up there's a chip underneath here a cd4049 which is that little one there i think i actually blew it up by accident or destroyed something very sensitive it's a cmos level one uh but with the this in place it will not boot i don't have roms on this like everybody else would have uh, they were eliminated a long time ago. I'm pretty certain that uh, I can get this going again fairly rapidly. So we're just doing a quick RAM test. So the CPU socket can see all these RAMs correctly, uh, but the game doesn't boot. And I'm going to let the RAM test complete, and I'm going to put the brace kit back in, and then see if we can still do a RAM read through the CPU socket here. And I should, in theory, be able to do a ROM read. If I can't do a ROM read at that point, then we know there's something else. These two chips here have proven to be good. They're actually, I swapped them um, on somebody else's braze kit that I had in uh, just to prove the point. And uh, these two worked on their braze kit, so I put them back on mine. Uh, I'm pretty certain at that point that... Uh, it's going to be this CD404. Now that's a brand new burnt EEPROM and again worked in the other braze kit. So uh, I can't see anything else being the issue here. Simple chip. It's actually just an inverting gate, uh, but it's a different pin out to a, 74, um, a 7404 or a 7406, that kind of chip. So, and it deals with um, lower level voltages, right? So. Fluke is still running its test. It's been through it once. Uh, you get all this random pattern. So it starts off with a white pattern and then goes through a more like, which is zeros actually. Fluke's just come back okay. So we know the RAM's okay on the board. That's absolutely fine. Let's proceed now and test the brace kit. Well, there's something. So I stuck the, I've put the brace kit in and I've put the, C, the um, fluke pod straight onto the brace kit and I just thought, you know what, I'll just see if I can rule out the CPU and I'll do a, a, a run unit under test. And guess what kids, it ran. So I think we've got a Duff CPU. Hmm, well it, it happens from time to time. Uh, but other than that, that's that board working again. Uh, doing this is a quick rush, a few rush fixes for Play Expo Leeds this weekend coming out. I don't know whether you'll see the video before or after. Uh, I'm going to try and actually shoot some event footage this time. Uh, I've got Sean Holly from Tempest Arcade working with us uh, this weekend. And hopefully uh, my mate Dan, who unfortunately had an accident at Manchester on the Sunday night, is going to hop along, hey, no pun intended, down to the venue and come and have a cup of coffee with us on the Sunday. Or even just sort of come and sit and mooch about on the Saturday. Anyway, but, um, all right, let's try the CPU. Well, what do you know? CPU did it. Um, so looks like I've potentially got two dead 8080 chips. Okay, right, so I've nicked one, uh, nicked one off a board set I've been working on just for uh, for test more than anything. Okay, well that's fine. I've got other 8080 chips. Um, I'm going to very just double check that. When I put it in, something weird happened though, which is where it didn't completely initialize. I'm going to see if I can get it to happen again. So I'm going to reset, goes through its pattern, and it came up with a black screen and did some beeping. But I suspect that was uh, me pressing on the board correctly, or the ROM, one of the RAMs wasn't completely socketed. But all the other tests pass okay by the look of it on the side. Let's just do a quick uh, sound test. Right, that's okay. And that's it. Then we get a cross hatch. Okay, I'm happy. Right, well, I'll find another CPU uh, to replace into that. And I'll give this three layer board set another CPU as well. Uh, well, its own CPU, which is that one. Can't say any more than that. Well, that's uh, that's our Space Invaders back up and running, thankfully. And that wasn't a huge problem fix. So it wasn't the 4049 chip. That was the interesting part. How uh, two CPUs, and I'm certain. Um, I remember plugging it in backwards with that one in place. I don't know. I might just try cleaning the pins up actually a bit because it could be a it could very easily be um, some tarnishing on one of these legs. I'll give it five more minutes of me time, and if not, I'm just going to bin these two CPU chips. It's a shame because, I mean, it was completely my fault. I did plug it in backwards, uh, but uh, I thought that one worked. I was convinced that that one was a worker. Okay, well, 
never mind. All right. Well, job done. Uh, all repaired. Hope you enjoyed this video, as uh, short as it was. Uh, didn't really get to teach you a lot other than the fact that, you know, a debugging process more than anything. Uh, I was, I'm able, I'm lucky enough to have one of these so I can actually do a very exhaustive RAM test on the board very, very quickly by just plugging straight into the CPU socket if there is one. If, if there isn't, I always desolder the CPU and put a socket in for that purpose. Uh, they didn't make this version. The Fluke 9010, they didn't make this version with a, a set of clips that you could put over the CPU and uh, basically force things in and out. Uh, there's probably damn good reasons for that, but I'm certain, does the ABI Boardmaster 4000 not uh, not have uh, clips that you can go straight over the CPU? I know you can go over RAM chips and you can go over um, uh, logic chips and things like that on it, but I've not got, uh, I don't have an ABI Boardmaster. Uh, I don't really think... Even the only thing that I like from it is its exo is its RAM tests, uh, which should prove whether two one one fours and six one one sixes are working. Because uh, unfortunately, I don't have a RAM tester for two one one fours. If anybody knows of one, now here's the one. There's the any of my stateside viewers. There was one floating around on eBay. If anybody would, the guy can't send me one here in England because of ROHS export crap. Um, <clears throat> I shouldn't really ask, but if there's anybody in the states. <clears throat> excuse my voice at the moment, anybody in the States who wouldn't mind sending me, uh, buying one on my behalf, I will send you the money, obviously, and then shipping it to me, uh, that would be a huge help, because it will do 2114, 5101, 6116, and a whole bunch of other RAMs as well, and it would help prove stock uh, was good or bad. I suppose I could actually make a 2114 tester with an Arduino with some bit shifters and things like that, because there's no... Um, row address strobe, column address strobe type uh, data. I don't have to worry about any clocking. Uh, basically, all I need to do is just send it a, an access pulse to write to it and then read to it. So, I wonder if. Uh, or Raspberry Pi. Hey, maybe that's the job for a Raspberry Pi. Testing 2114s. Now, I know somebody's come up with a hybrid Boardmaster Fluke thing. If you go to ukvac.com and look up for the Raspberry Pi Arduino board tester. It's a hybrid where they've basically put it into uh, what looks like an old 70s alarm clock box. And it's got a little screen and everything and does all that. It can do RAM tests and it can... Um, I'm Everybody knows that my vision isn't brilliant. So a, a device with a little tiny screen on it is just no good for me. But uh, the guy who's working on it says that it will support an HDMI or VGA type output on the back. I, I really want something like a PC setup that I can run on. You know, I mean, my ultimate set would be, you know, a little external box that I can sit underneath the monitor, just above the monitor with a cable coming down, and the PC talks to the box, and the box then, sorry about the shaky camera thing, and the box then talks to the board. Because then I could actually fire code tests to it and things like that. Anyway, um, I've tried to reach out to the developer, but I know he's busy at the moment and hasn't sort of responded to a few messages I've sent him. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, be more videos coming soon. I'm going to try and pick up the pace again. If anybody, by the way, if anybody out there wants to offer to help with video editing, um, please go to the website and use the contact us button. We are, I am desperately in need of somebody who can uh, do editing for us. I can post the content to somewhere where you can get it or I need you to assemble it, cut it and make it make sense with certain annotations and certain assets. Um, so, but we, we, I am so far behind with video editing and I just have no time to do it whatsoever. <clears throat> I, I really want something that I can... I, I've tried to do it off my phone even, but even that's now starting to consume time and we try to film so many of these things for everybody. I'm getting nowhere. So, uh, let's see if I can just reset that. There we go. So it's still running. I'm going to give it one more reset whilst it's on camera. So it's had time. It's had a few minutes to warm up. According to the uh, counter on the phone here, it's at six minutes we've been running this clip for. And it boots first time. There we go. It goes through its tests. Ta-da! Now, the only thing I will say that's interesting about this particular board, and it may be dip switches or it may be something, I don't know. All the other Space Invaders boards I get, the screen is the other way around on them when they come to me. Uh, but this one is this way, and I don't know why. I'm not seeing... Uh, there's dip switches over there. I wonder if there's... Uh, I wonder if, if it's the upright version, it's supposed to be this way round. And if you put it in cocktail mode, it starts the other way round. Not sure. Mm. 
worth having a quick look at the dip switches for. But uh, anyway, that's for another video. Main thing is, we now have a working Space Invaders game again for us, which is going to be at Leeds this weekend. Hooray! All right, till the next video, don't forget to uh, give us a like, give us a comment. If you don't like the video, well, you know where the, th you know where the thumbs down button is. That kind of tells us uh, what you think as well. Uh, you can send us hate mail to go um, go show it up your bottom at uh, wedontcare.com. And, uh, well, we'll see you on the next video. Speak to you later.